Welcome to This Week at Omnia, I'm Polish Pete, and we're gonna be breaking down all the hot fishing activity going on all over the country based on your fishing reports. We're gonna kick things off in Florida. We got a couple great fishing reports from Jackson and Brian. Uh, Jackson was focusing in on the drop shot, one of the most popular techniques that gets used all over the whole country in all phases of fish activity throughout the year. We're seeing that post -spawn, or pre-spawn conditions are what's happening down there in Florida for the most part. We are seeing some spawning activity going on as well, but you can see Jackson dialed in his bite with the drop shot. He's using the Missile Baits Robo Worm uh, collaboration and the Magic Worm uh, on a drop shot with an owner cover shot hook. Great hook for that application. You can actually rig uh, the bait kind of tech suppose so it's a little bit more weedless in that drop shot presentation. We saw John Cruz take down a victory on the St. Johns River in Florida this same time frame uh, last year with that technique. So the drop shot's a great way to target maybe some of those fish that haven't already pulled up into that shallow uh, spawning grounds, maybe in those staging areas before they've gone up to spawn. It also does work on a bed, but uh, for the most part, that, that technique really shines in those pre-spawn locations. And thanks for Jackson for pointing out some of the baits that are working for you right now in Florida. Now we move on to Brian's report. And this is a staple in Florida this time of year. You're seeing he's keying in on moving baits like the bladed jig, the jackhammers, the chatterbaits, the slobber knockers of the world, the, the thunder crickets. Anytime you got that bladed jig and you're trying to cover water and rip that bait through uh, uh, submerged vegetation that's, out, that's shallow around these spawning grounds these fish are in, uh, that's a great bait to key in on those spawning fish. We saw that he fished a tournament there for the Extreme Bass Series down in Florida and that those moving baits were key players. The rattle trap, the lipless crankbaits, those style baits where you're actually casting your hard bait into vegetation and ripping it through is getting those reaction baits out of those fish that are up in those spawning areas around that vegetation right now is key. Even the spinner bait played a little bit there in Florida, which is an old school bait that's starting to get its rise back up to prominence in tournament fishing. We're seeing the spinner bait play more and more each year as it seemed to have kind of fallen off the map for a little while. The spinner baits back and catching fish, but Clearly the winner of, of uh, Brian's reports was that chatterbait. So if you're heading down to Florida anytime soon, make sure you got your drop shots on your spinning setups and you got your chatterbait rod all rigged up and ready to go catch some pre-spawn and spawning largemouth bass down there in Florida. Moving on to some significant wins down there in Florida, we have Kenny Steverson that won the MLF Toyota Series event down there in Florida on Lake Opapaca. If I'm saying that wrong, I've seen that lake a million times. I still don't know how to pronounce it properly, but he won that event down there and he did it. Same theme as we talked about with the previous fishing reports there. He was actually covering water with a chatterbait, but when he get around the reeds that had hard bottom, he was flipping a five inch Yamamoto Senko. Staple down there in Florida, especially for those spawning fish that are on that hard bottom that has vegetation to kind of hide him around it. Uh, he keyed in on that, flipped that Yamamoto Senko around and bagged himself $100,000 in winning. So as you can see, that spawn, spawning patterns are paying off big time down in Florida in these early spring months. We got some great crappie reports from our blue ambassador, Kevin Rogers in. Kevin Rogers is an MLF pro bass fisherman, also fishes the MPFL as a pro bass fisherman as well, but he's one of the most accomplished crappie anglers in the entire country, and he's hooking us up with some of the deets when it comes to catching some big wintertime crappies. Either, that and also some eater-sized crappies as well, as you can see that he highlighted in his Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma report. That lake is really stained. He was able to vertical jig using an eighth ounce hair jig from Jenko that he was using to pick off these crappies that were filling the freezer up in that 11 inch range. Uh, perfect presentation in those winter months where it's really cold water. We're talking 39 degree water temps. So those fish are kind of suspended out there. He's using that forward facing sonar as we hear all too often right now in the fishing world. Uh, is how he's keying in on these fish that are suspended in that cold water and he's picking them off by putting that jig right on their nose. Then he traveled over to Lake Fork where your water temp was up in that 44 degree range. So we're still talking wa winter water temps here. And he's picking them off the same way, vertical jigging in the creek channels here. So he's fishing like 10 feet down there with a 130 second ounce jig. So he's downsizing a little bit here on Lake Fork. And he's pointing out the fact that Lake Fork's known for its big bass, but it's also got some trophy crappie fishing in it as well. 
So if you're gonna be traveling anywhere down south right now to kind of try and fill your freezer up with some crappies or chase those uh, giant uh, trophy crappies, it looks like you're gonna need some hair jigs and your forward-facing sonar and go catch up on all of Kevin's reports to make sure you're dialed in for your next crappie fishing adventure. We're about to kick off the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series season, and that's big to us here at Omnia because three of our favorite anglers who are associated with us here at Omnia Fishing, Seth Fighter, Patrick Walters, and Bob Downey, are starting their seasons off on Lake Okeechobee down in Florida. Following right up after Lake Okeechobee, they're heading up to Seminole, which is on the border of Florida and Georgia there, which is going to be an interesting one as well. We'll start with Lake Okeechobee. Lake Okeechobee is a giant lake, giant natural body of water uh, that's pretty shallow for the size of the body of water it is. Uh, so it warms up quickly. So we're going to see those, the, those Florida strain bass are affected much more uh, by uh, weather patterns than the, than the northern strain largemouth I'm used to fishing for up here in my neck of the woods up in Minnesota uh, and Florida down there if you get a cold front those, it'll shut those, that fishing down dramatically and it'll pull those fish off their spawning grounds really fast they might still mill around it but it's going to be hard to look at them if you get those cold front conditions or muddies up the water if you get some wind and north winds and uh, things of that nature uh, but Probably, most likely these guys are going to start off by looking around, using their eyeballs, trying to find hard spots in that shallow vegetation and around spawning areas and see if they can find some fish spawning. If they can find clear enough water where they can locate the fish with their eyeballs spawning, they can pick off those larger females and get their five fish bags up into that mid-20s to lower 30-pound range, hopefully even, uh, even bigger than that at times. Okeechobee's got them. There's big giant ones in there. It's been fishing a little tough over the last past few years, so it's been a little while since Bassmasters vi visited Lake Okeechobee, but we've seen early signs this year that the lake is pretty healthy. Lots of numbers and decent sized bags are coming out of it. So if we do get some weather, I think you're going to see anglers moving and covering a lot of water with moving baits, such as the ever famous uh, uh, chatter baits and lipless crankbaits. Uh, bladed jigs are going to be a huge player in Florida as they have been for years now. Lipless crankbaits, the speed worm, check out that technique as well. That's a, uh, that's a Florida staple down there. But when they get into an area where they think those fish are spawning, they've keyed in on an area where they think those fish have hunkered down to start the spawning process or, or even they're actively spawning, you're going to see them slow down and pick that vegetation apart or those hard spots apart with uh, a lot of flipping techniques even some finessing uh, them on the, on the bed. You'll see that a little bit as well. Typically with the size of those Florida bass, you're going to see a little bit more heavy tackle for bed fishing than you'd see up in my neck of the woods or with smallmouth, for example, or spotted bass. You might see them doing some, some flipping with some big braid and big jigs and things like that on a bed and Texas rigs. And as you saw from some of our fishing reports we've been getting, that, that flipping that Yamamoto Senko around in those spawning areas has been a key player down in Florida as well. But look for our anglers to cover a lot of water with moving baits in those pre-spawn presentations and then see if they can key in on some of those shallow spawners to get those big, big bites and get some of those big females that weigh in those five plus pound ranges that, that really fill out a good tournament limit. We're going to go over a couple of the baits that we've seen by collecting the data we have here at Omnia Fishing from our fishing reports, from uh, from sales uh, data that we get as well from all over the country. And we've seen a couple trends kick off here with a couple baits. Uh, the Berkeley Fritz side has jumped up in sales dramatically. We've seen this bait shine through, through certain times of the year for us sales wise in those spring and fall months where you would imagine a flat sided crankbait would shine. Uh, but these have been catching them all year round all over the country. This is becoming a staple crankbait in a lot of people's boxes. Uh, but you're really going to see it shine in those cold weather months, uh, that pre-spawn, post-spawn time frame where the water temps haven't reached their summertime temps yet. That's where these things really shine, hence why we see the sales and them going up. They have a new player now with the clacking one. We've got multiple sizes that will go different depths. So depending on your body of water, you can cover uh, you know, the really super shallow stuff with almost like a squareable variant like here, like the five here, down to some deeper coffin bill style ones that will get in some deeper water. Uh, if you're not finding the color you want or if we're out of stock on any variants of the, the Fritz side when you're after it, some other baits that are just, that, that'll catch them just like the Fritz side will for you to take a look at is like the Rapala OG Slim here and you got the Chick Magnet from uh, from striking both. Similar ideas behind them where they have flat sides and they're going to fish well in, in colder water conditions. 
Next up, can't have any talks about tips or trends right now in the fishing industry without talking about forward-facing sonar. Jewel came out with a new bait for forward-facing sonar fishing that is a new category in itself. We argued over where to even put this. Is it a spinner bait? Is it a jigging spoon? What is this? It's a forward-facing sonar bait. Uh, it's, a, it's a spinner bait, but it's got like a jigging spoon style body on a heavy lead body. This is a one ounce compact little spinner bait, but it's got treble hooks on the front and back of the bait here. Uh, instead of having a single hook, because you're going to fish this on slack line as you kind of snap it, let it fall, pitch it to fish that are suspended that you're seeing on your forward facing sonar. Uh, because of that big blade, it's going to slow the fall rate down. So if you're used to using a jigging spoon in those situations, this bait will be a little bit easier to keep in that target range and it'll stay in that target depth a little bit longer because of that blade slow, spinning and slowing down the fall. And you can catch more fish. You got two trebles on it, so your landing percentage should go up in theory when you're hooking them with slack line when they're hitting it on the fall. So if you want to uh, up your forward facing sonar game, uh, check out this Jewel Scope Spin. I'd show you some variants of stuff that are, are similar baits to it, but they own this market right now as far as, far as coming to a jigging spinner bait uh, from Jewel here with the Scope Spin. So check out these two baits, uh, the Fritz side and the Scope Spin, and we'll be back soon with another This Week at Omnia and more baits for you to check out that are catching them all over the country.